This is Neurotransformation Journey. Neurotransformation Journey with Dr. Kathy Holloway introduces viewers to the simple self-care steps that address medical mysteries and restore healthy vitality. Decades of teaching the neuroscience of medical interventions to healthcare practitioners internationally and healing from her own brain injuries illuminate Dr. Kathy's grounded, logical approach to self-care and healing. So now, please welcome your host, Dr. Kathy Hallway. Well, hello. Welcome back to your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. I'm Dr. Kathy Hallway, physical therapist, your host, your embodied transformation guide. And today I've got some interesting stories for you. I mean, I always do, but a few new things popped up this week. And uh, my focus this week, my focus, okay, was on how do we manage filtering out the noisy world out there and the noisy world up in here to focus on what's important to us and find our flow and bring our magic forward? And so that that brought me to a whole different interpretation of our sensory processing stories, because when we are landed in our secure, interoceptive self, it all changes. So today we're going to we're going to we're going to go f- explore that. And you know the mysteries of our sensory processing have been evolving for centuries, centuries. <laughs> How do we ex- perceive the world through our extraceptive senses, sight, smell, hearing, sound, touch, and what reactions or responses does that evoke in us? And how do we understand ourselves? How do we process our internal sense of self and make sense of what we're, we're feeling from our interoceptive wisdom? And, you know, let's remember, we've imprinted some of that body, brain, emotional patterning even before we had language to describe it. Because, you know, our wiring mapping begins before birth. And it turns out they're recognizing now that the first two weeks, the first two weeks postnatal after we arrive are especially critical to establishing our multidimensional sensory circuits, interoceptive and extraoceptive. And so in a way, in many ways, our early nervous system acted out our stories and we communicated to our world through emotional responses and movement. And some of these patterns, some of these response reaction patterns are wired into us as our primal reflexes. And that's how we're hardwired to survive here at the beginning where, oh, um, the smell of food, we turn our head and lick our lips and get ready to eat, okay? or we hear our favorite human coming towards us and we light up with a smile and get ready to snuggle. So our primal reflexes are meant to get us started in the world so we are fed and heard and seen and held. And then as our consciousness evolved, we learned to interact in a more direct way. But it was still driven by our senses, seeing, smelling, our favorite person, we sigh, we gurgle, we smile. And my question as we start today is, what if we let ourselves feel this original connection process within us through our senses before our cortical overlords took over? Uh Uh-huh, yeah. And if we're gonna talk about sensory processing, let's start with the familiar of our Penfield homunculus sensory motor mapping in our brain. Penfield, the famous Canadian surgeon who, neurosurgeon, originally mapped our sensory motor maps in 1937 while he was doing open brain surgery back then, okay, to help epilepsy patients. And we know it's the picture of the little man up there, okay? Um, But guess what? Hello. 100 years later, um, 
uh, imagine this, they're discovering that, um, well, we may to need to adapt that map, adapt that model because, huh, did you know a male's homunculus does not map the same way as a female hermunculus? I mean, how could it in sensory motor functioning? So there's still some baseline to his original maps, but guess what else we've got in that mapping? We've got navigational cells. We've got, this is part of our motor movement mapping up there. And it also connects to executive functions, thinking, planning, visual processing, processing, touch, pain, internal body signals, and, and movement. So researchers are like, okay, hang on. This is a integrative whole body map up there, including movements. And, you know, think about it. This is when you change posture, you're paying attention, your breathing changes, your heart rate changes. So, you know, our brain is here to move us in the environment successfully so we can achieve our goals without hurting ourselves. We move our body for a reason, and that's more represented in this map up here than we know. So the classic homunculus or hermunculus, okay, I see you, I hear you, um, is incomplete and needs to be revised. And this is what researchers have, you know, really dove into. And they, uh, to include all of these things, they came up with a new name. They're calling it now the somato, cognitive action network scan and isn't that makes sense all right that holds this new way of recognizing how body and mind are working together all right and how even our interoceptive self that's mapped up here they're acknowledging our internal dynamics that we've been talking about for months so scan, somato, cognitive action network. And from that basis, we're going to kind of consider the old wiring and sensory processing functions in a new way so that uh, we understand it's a more comprehensive function up there, a comprehensive dynamic. And it starts with your soft belly breath. So slide on in. Let's start there together. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. 
Rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies. Find settings that allow them to be the most productive and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back, Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. And uh, yeah, the mystery, okay, our comprehensive dynamics here that start our body brain maps, you know, end up in that hermunculus. That's my identity for it. Um, <laughs> and then there's different layers through our brain that are managing our sensory input. And so one of those wiring mysteries that has been playing out in our bodily existence um, was vaguely recognized, was eventually named sensory processing disorder. And this refers to the circuitry confusion and difficulty receiving and processing extraceptive sensory input. And it's only in the past nine or 10 years that this has been examined and determined to be real from a brain wiring confusion perspective. So it's your wiring, not willfulness, okay? It's not a behavioral issue, it is wiring confusion. And sensory processing disorder is identified in about 16% of school-age children that contributes to both their cognitive and their behavioral challenges because these kiddos cannot process external stimulation, which cause a wide range of symptoms, including hypersensitivity to sound, sight, touch, all right? And there can be tactile triggers that torment the kids wearing them like tags in your shirts, things you wouldn't think about, tags in your shirts, woolly sweaters, an accidental touch. Um, the auditory triggers can include what? Coffee grinders, car noises, music, noisy moving toys. And visual provocation can set kids off, including, you know, the IMAX movies, crowded stadiums, parking lots, even, you know, stuff hanging in a store. So there's that visual guarding that evolves to try to block out what's overwhelming. And many affected kiddos with SPD also have poor fine motor skills, holding a pencil, keeping my attention, emotional regulation, or developmental motor delays. It's a complex thing. And I just want to call out to how many of us older kids struggled with this. All right, and still have to reorganize around it. Uh, one of my brothers was in the middle of this and was sent to a child psychiatrist to learn cognitive behavioral techniques to clench out his confusion and just stay out of trouble that way. And that did not serve him well. Okay, <laughs> so guess what? All of this sensory confusion comes down to. Um, the white matter pathways in your brainstem, especially for sensory processing in the cranial nerve, the lower two inches of your brainstem, and then the connections to your auditory, visual, touch systems, um, the two hemispheres talking to each other are just not quite online. All right, so the timing of the transmission is off, the processing becomes difficult or impossible, and um, this is where now, luckily, the kiddos have sound-reducing headphones, okay? It's more recognized. Because if you, how can you interact properly? And, and if you can't integrate that extraceptive input with your interoceptive circuits, how can you plan appropriate movements or interactions? And let's add another new piece that just showed up, okay? <laughs> our sensory cortex, our her homunculus up here that is processing all those sensations is much more involved in triggering reactions under 
threat. Okay. This cortex is monitoring your threats in the environment. And that was a big shock to the researchers because in the past, <clears throat> they attributed those threat reactions to our amygdala, that circuit in there that um, they thought, oh, that's the center of fear. And that triggers, yeah, it triggers your panic and you're clenched and your, you know, panic juiced. But it's the sensory cortex that is holding the long-term kind of memes of threat what's out there so that we can access it more quickly to recognize whether we're in a secure environment or there's something dangerous out there. So it's not, it's more than your sensory processing in terms of too noisy, don't touch me, I can't see that and hear you at the same time. It's like, wow, how does this crank up our autonomic processing to like be in perpetual stress drive? Okay. So from that sensory cortex detection of this doesn't look right, it's not safe out there, that gets zipped down into all of our fear reaction circuits. And, and there we go, triggered in a sensory processing distress. So it's, a, in a way, this makes sense, all right? Because what, what do we know? A complex wiring dynamics up here, all right? Between our internal sensory awareness and our external motor go be in the world function. And what else do we know? Some of this white matter pathway, this wiring that connects us from brainstem upstream into our integrative circuits to figure it out. That wiring of ours, our processing wiring is as unique as our fingerprints. All right. So, you know, we're here in our bodies being in the world in our own unique way. And there's another expression. How do you sort through what's an overreaction from sensory overload and feel for what's the true expression meant to come forward here that we're wired for? So it's, uh, it's we all want to be seen and heard and held. And this is where something like our approach of our soft belly breath is so helpful to first you need to know you're held. All right, like the little guy held on the couch until he was done with his sensory splat and whew, you're still in here. All right, because it's from that soft breath being held, your presence within, that you find out how to organize you in here so that you can navigate that overwhelming world out there in a smoother way. So... As it's, you know, again, the bottom line, it's your wiring, it's not willfulness, it's your biology, not a behavior problem. <laughs> so let's slide in our soothing breath and hold ourselves that gently. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? 
Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, Hope, and Support for Caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Welcome back. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. And uh, all right, <laughs> can you feel it? It's a different journey already. So we have an expanded, more comprehensive homunculus, hermunculus map that is transforming into our somatocognitive action network. Okay, <laughs> how our cognition is managing our body or more. And we have our extraceptive processing patterns. All right. What's going on out there? Sight, smell, sound, touch. Okay. That are hopefully running smoothly through our brainstem, white matter pathways and circuits. But wait, there's more. <laughs> very, very explicit, unique, and integrative circuits mapping occurs throughout our brain from our deep white matter brainstem circuits and pathways up to our greater cortical maps. And all of that organization starts with our autonomic nervous system mapping up into those brain circuits. So let's, let's hold space for our autonomic nervous system for a moment here, because that's what is connecting our critical survival pathways between body and brain. And that's what gets the party started in our embryology in there, but it's not functionally online until 35 weeks gestation. And its primal survival functions include keeping our belly, breath, and heartbeat going, right? And they have those circuits, those, that connection has its own mapping deep in our brainstem. All right. So, um, you know, when the um, neuroscience is typically considered that extraoceptive processing and the coding strategies the brain uses to process those extraoceptive sight, smell, sound inputs, through our cranial nerve circuit board. Um, that's a very specific kind of tracking and organizing, but that ain't nothing compared to what our interoceptive mapping is doing inside. So all that hoopla about our vagus nerve, all right, sends its body brain, body organ input to the brainstem's main circuit NTS, nucleus of solitary tract. I know the letters are backwards, nucleus of tractus solitaris, okay? <laughs> and that's where vagus hooks up with glossopharyngeal that's running our breath and heartbeat and our facial nerve that's, mm -hmm, yep, smiling us through. Um, and so that circuit, that nucleus in our brainstem is has its own mapping to it. You think the homunculus, hermunculus is important? Guess what? Your NTS map is mapping all of your visceral function in your body. It's mapping your embodiment. And, uh, you know, vagus brings the info up and then it goes up further upstream brainstem to regulate our physiological responses to keep us healthy in this body and then generate our behavior. It's kind of our internal sensory gateway for the brain. And yeah, it is more complicated because guess what? Your visceral system, your internal organs are sending signals about mechanical forces as your bladder full and stretching, um, hormones, nutrients, toxins, 
temperature, and more. That's multi-dimensional signals coming upstream there that um, kind of need the proper consideration. So how does that brainstem circuit figure out whether, oh, mechanical stretch is, uh, it's in my bladder, I better go pee, but if it's in my stomach, it means stop eating. Okay, and, and if it's in my lungs, it means, okay, exhale, your lungs are full. So, yeah, there's our visceral mapping that they found in our brainstem. And how do these two systems now, our interoceptive mapping processing and our extrasensive sensory motor mapping, how do these two systems need to coordinate um, for our healthy function and presence in the world? If a, if a sense, an SPD kiddo is overstimulated and learns to function in stress drive, what happens to his autonomic interoceptive function? And if you've been living with that confusion your whole life, how does that accelerate other autonomic confusion? You know, and then you don't know what you don't know. You don't know the relief of feeling your own belly breath. You don't know, ooh, wait, me first. Let me feel me landed here first for me, and then I can meet the world out there. All right? We've had a lifetime of... Being here in the world means I just have to be hyper, you know, vigilant and responsive and reactive to what's going on out there. And uh, that's, that's, that's not what health is, all right? So when we're here in our belly breath and we follow our landing rituals and we learn our signaling language within, then, huh, yeah, go ahead and feel how it changes your former sensory overwhelm from that world out there. Oh, when I'm softly breathing in here and I know I'm present, those loud noises don't bother me. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, oh, that smells good. Yeah, I never thought of it that way before. This is part of our filtering process where we are rewiring these circuits up here to huh, find ourselves in here so we can filter out, dismiss the sensory stuff that doesn't matter to us right now so that we can focus on what does matter to us and then flow along in our undisrupted life. So all of our interoceptive landing patterns that calm us down in here are part of our filtering system that then lets us focus where we need to be. So try another breath there. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside, you know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? 
Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Here we are. Welcome back. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. So, yes, what do we know now? When we slide in and feel our belly breath and get our interoceptive gurgle going, that is the first step at setting up our higher processing filter system. All right, so that then we can find our focus. So we know this. I got some stories for you about those filtration circuits up there, um, predictive coding circuits up there. So we're going to look upstream a little bit. And yep, in our normal interoceptive processing, body brain connections, our body signals drive up to the brain stem where they are either reflexively trigger something or sent upstream for further integration and interpretation. And a big player in that upstream management, we talk about this a lot, brainstem to thalamus. And thalamus then transmits signals to cortex, to insula. We put ourselves together at that layer of things. And Thalamus, as we know, is, wow, it's our dynamite in there. It's <laughs> mapping at three layers, our proprioceptive body signals, our visceral signals, our orofacial structure and function. And it coordinates our sleep and our consciousness and our vision and hearing, all right? And to do all this, it's wired to have a dynamic bi-directional connection to the cortex. So it takes in those signals from body and what do you think about that? Okay, we'll do it this way. So the cells in the thalamus core, the reticular nucleus, um, send sensory information out to the cortex and the cells on the outer layer of the thalamus receive and coordinate information coming in from our different extraceptive senses, vision, hearing. So yes, there's a lot going on in those little egg-shaped bundles back there of coordinating what our body's doing, what we're seeing out there in the world, and what we need to do about it. So we're, this is where we organize our sensory patterns, our sleep patterns, our attention patterns, all right in there. And, you know, there's a thalamocortical process going on too. Um, oh, this is what I think out there. Uh, okay, act on it from in here. And, you know, this is important communication in our juicy brain circuitry. And that um, that's one of the circuits, thalamus cortex, that, uh, helps to block out distracting sensory input, all right? So when thalamus is like, whoa, I don't know, I can barely keep her breathing and upright at the same time, never mind figuring that out, okay? Thalamus impairment here can restrict, disrupt our ability to block out distracting sensory input. And then what? then, wow, how's your attention work with that? There's attention deficits. There's hypersensitivity to noise and other stimuli. There's sleep issues. Can't settle into your breath and 
calm that down. And so Thalamus is managing a lot in there about, uh, you know, how do I get in here? How do I calm down that input so I can get my focus, internal attention to make sense of this situation with a story I've got on file there? And so our cortical organization is important here too. And our prefrontal cortex circuits have been keeping track of this interoceptive sensory processing as well. So it's part of our sensory gating, gating process where our mind's recognition alters our sensory reception for better or for worse. Okay. Can we, and that's where your mind says, oh, I know that room. Oh, wait, I'm at Dr. Kathy's house. Okay. Whew. All right. I can land. I can be here. Good. Or, uh-oh, I'm uh, going to go visit that person over there. Okay. Ugh, clench. Ain't safe. My mind has the stories. You better watch out. That has not been safe for us. And then you can't even take in the moment. You lose the moment. You lose you. We've learned this of... When we go in that stress clench edge, okay, what breath, what heartbeat, what tummy gurgle, what me, right? So a lifetime of those stress reactions that leaves us out there, kind of we lose what's in here. And when our work starts bringing us back in and that we, uh, we know now I can pause, I can feel my breath, I can feel what's right for me in this situation. In the past, I would have reacted that way. But right now I know, no, this is what's right for me here. I'm going to go that way. And, you know, again, this is an invitation to us all this week. From that pause, from that belly breath, from being here, start to notice what feels different in your environment. All right, what feels different in your environment? The feel of you sitting on that couch, okay? And, oh, I think I want some music playing. Okay. And, oh, dinner tastes better. That's good. Yeah. And, oh, I can have a different conversation with my friend here on the couch. Uh-huh. Yes. So the depth, the dynamic of our presence within our self, our introceptive landing, changes our extraceptive sensory awareness, and then changes our decision making, our story processing. And it's part of our greater organization. This is how we, we organize us inside out and outside in. So there's, there's a lot to consider here. And this is, you know, before we try helping our SPD kiddos from some story about how it should work. No, take the deep breath. Here, have a warm tummy, buddy. Put it on your tummy and what? I can feel my breath. Uh-huh. And then appreciate how the world changes for that kiddo you're working with from that first landing of being in their own breath. So there's a good opportunity for you while we're on break, go feel your breath and feel what that's doing for you and what you'll hear differently when I get back. So Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy 
lazysense.com and learn how, with your help, we can fight these horrific brain disorders. That's easysense.com to learn more and help support the Broderick Foundation. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. We discover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back, Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. And uh, yeah, bet you never learned about sensory processing issues like this before. <laughs> it's amazing stuff. And, you know, so what does this all mean for us in our real life? And, you know, yeah, those thalamus cortical circuits are, do, are what's filtering out our irrelevant sensory input so we can focus on what's relevant for us. We have to add an extra F in there. First, we feel our belly breath, and then those circuits can wake up and filter for us. And then, oh, we are ready to get our juicy focus going. So um, it's, it's a whole new world of possibilities out there. And we can coordinate these multiple different forms of attention in order to uh, have our mental dexterity, you know, that gives us our cognitive flexibility. Pay attention to what we want when we want to. And of course we have, you know, special circuits up there doing that. Um, remember in our mapping, we got... Oh, belly breath to brain stem, and then it goes up to thalamus and out to insula. And in between then is this cingulate cortex, okay? And that's part of the in-between hub that is managing our focus and our filter settings, okay? And that's what helps us prioritize and process pertinent stimuli. So, uh, these two hubs, these two cingulate gyrus hubs, um, connect through our parietal lobe sulcus, what connects our parietal lobes in there. They're right above our temporals. They're like right here. And it's like a radio dial, okay? Those signals, one part of it adjusts what we're going to focus on, and the other adjusts what we're going to, you know, how our filtering is going to work. So in your brain, it's saying, yeah, never mind that. I want to focus on this. Turn down those signals, turn up this one. So it's like multi control of attention that our brains are separately controlling the enhancement of what's relevant information for us and filters out the distractions <laughs> so we can have our complex mental focus. This is like, what? Who knew we were actually wired for that? Your mind is not doing it all on its own, okay? Your wiring is supporting you with that. And so it's a coordination. It's a coordination between those two special circuits to modulate our sensitivity to stimuli, optimize our brain's attentional focus. And now here's where I just want to remind us that... Um, we know what, in our juicy brain function, belly breath, who opens up those juicy circuits, gets, gets the party going in there. And what, it's not just about the wiring pathways and circuits. It's about what, our brain waves? What, 
uh huh, <laughs> and the vitality of our brainwave function up there is really what lets all the pieces blossom, all the pieces of us blossom in our circuitry. So they've identified two specific brainwave forms up there that are important in this filter focus flow process. And here's something I learned. They've identified something called brain ripples. Okay. It's not just in your brain wave. It's this okay. Quick little ripples, very fast oscillations that are working when we're organizing our memories. All right. That must be important on the inside. And then we've talked about, we have gamma waves, we have beta waves. Uh -huh. You know what else is working for us in this situation? They're called beta bursts. Whew, little fast flashes of beta waves. And these are beta brain waves are the most prominent signatures of our brain activity. And, you know, this power, beta power, baby, or is predictive of our healthy or not so healthy behaviors, our perception, our attention, our motor action. They're high power, they trigger high power events. So it's base bursts of beta signal in the brain, not sustained rhythms that filter our sensory processing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we need the juice going, we need our juicy brain going, but then um, bzz, they burst along and okay, gotcha, this, not that. So the more beta activity there was, the more the cortex gets signaled and maybe it inhibits certain sensations so you can focus on others. It distracts, okay? It suppresses distractions so your focus can stay here. And all of these dynamic filtering and focusing properties lead us into our flow state, all right? And there's there is a term that the world has taken off with. Ooh, find your flow. Yeah, okay, good. Um, creative flow, all right, is where we have extensive experience and then we let go of our control of it. That lets, whew, lets our embodiment, lets our juicy creativity make something of it for us, right? So yes, we've got expertise. And then we release our cortical clench about it and let it find its expression through us, okay? And this, this deep creative flow is more accessible when, yeah, I've got, I got the, the wiring on that and then I can let go of my executive control and feel what it wants to show me. So, yeah. There's a good dance for you, right? And those of us who spend a life creating, hello, how did we get here? There's the rhythm of it, all right? <sighs> okay, I've got the experience and I can let go of my cortical quench and be in this spontaneous creative creativity right here, starting with your next belly breath. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like... I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. 
Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Welcome back, Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. And, uh, you know, I had just one more thought about that flow stuff, right? So we're in our juicy landing, our belly breath, and hmm, we feel ourselves being present in whatever environment we're in. And yes, um, there's that our cognitive processing, our creative processing flow, okay, of, hmm, wonder what new story I could tell about this stuff today. And then there's our extraceptive sensory processing flow where, ooh, I'm taking a walk on the beach. Yeah, all right. Here's the hot sand under my feet. Here's the sound of the ocean, the feel of the water droplets, the sound of the birds. Here's the sight of the palms blowing in the wind. How we, when we're landed and flowing in us, can flow in our environment, especially in nature. And is this not where all that forest bathing stuff is really happening, all right? That we're soft in us and we're we're walking, we're in our rhythmic movement, whether it's at the beach or in the woods, and ooh, these trees know where I am, and we're held in our greater environment that way. And is that not a kind of extraceptive sensory world that, wow, when have we been able to be fully present to that? Mm-hmm. So there's our bonus discovery for today. And where does this leave us? I mean, it leaves us with all the more reason to slide in, celebrate our interoceptive processing roots that help our upstream cortical processors work seamlessly to create our best experience, no matter where we are, in our safe nook, getting ready to write a new show, or out there at the edge of the woods taking our healing walk. And yes, we have already begun our soft sensory synchrony path here. And you, you know it, come on, you recognize it. Uh, in the past, if you've recognized old triggers, you might have reacted to clench and divert, but or clenched your way through and and that only serves to shut you down deeper inside, belly, breath, heartbeat, brain, self. So when we switch priorities and make our soft belly landing the important first step for our health and our fulfillment and nourishing ourselves in all of these magical ways, um, that's the first important step and that brings us to the world in a way that makes sense to us. And now we know we've got a whole circuit board up here that's enlivening this, that's oh, guiding us through this. Oh yeah, pay attention to this. Never mind that. I'll filter it out for you. And now let's focus and let's get curious and let's find your creative juice flowing. And that opens up your learning and memory circuits in a whole way and your happy juice bar. So, you know, here we are. Here we are more present in our beautiful, juicy flow together. And uh, 
I would just like to remind you to keep track of what's new and the new mischief I've come up with. Check out my website, nvinstitute.com. And uh, thank you for being here with me today, Dr. Kathy, with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. And I'll see you next week. Thank you. You've been watching Neurotransformation Journey with your host, Dr. Kathy Hallway. Tune in each week as Dr. Kathy will introduce a common challenge and outline basic resolution strategies. Tuesdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, here on Bold Brave TV.